Welcome, welcome, curious souls, to the Macabre Emporium, your sanctuary for the unusual, the mysterious, and the appalling. Step through our cryptic doorway into a world where secrets whisper and enigmas come to life. I'm David. And I'm Sarah. Together, we're your custodians of the macabre, guiding you through tales that defy the ordinary. Discover the untold stories, from lesser-known cases of true crime to the bizarre events that captivate us. Join us on a journey to the shadows where the mainstream fades and the extraordinary beckons. So whether you seek the bizarre, the eerie, or the chillingly obscure, you're in for a treat here at Macabre Emporium. <laughs> Welcome back to Macabre Emporium. This is episode 77. And if a spooky, scary skeleton might have sent you our way, welcome because it's finally October. Spooktober. The lean month is here, everybody. Yeah. So we're doing a David sode this week, and it's kind of a spooky story. Yeah. Yeah. We did say we were going to switch up this month. So that you yeah. could get something put out on its anniversary. Yep. So. Which I thought about, I was like, oh, how it's it like, and consider is that, well, we, there's other horrible events we talk about every time on their mm -hmm. anniversaries. And yep. we were given the opportunity to do this just being the same thing. Yep. So, but then you can think about, hey, this is what it was like that day here when that happened. Yeah. But also... Earlier this week was International Podcasters Day, yes. which was also two years for us. Can you believe it? Two years already? No, it doesn't feel like two years. Nope. It's like once we hit, you know, upload, everything's been going 100 miles an hour ever since then. Pretty much. And we've went and done some things that we never thought we would do. We met, met some great people also from mm -hmm. both ends of the, you know, our country. You know, we met people from Oregon and they passed through our area and... People Oregon? from, yeah, all from oh, duh. the Phantasmagoric Oddities Emporium. Phantasmagoric. I said it. Close enough, the Poe. <laughs> I'm just going to continue on going with the Poe because I can never remember it. But anyway. That, Vermont. Yeah, we have our Kevin friends, or a.k.a. the dog show in Vermont. They drove all the way here to Indiana to meet with us and some other podcast hosts at one of their live shows and did a ghost yep. hunt with him at an old jail, which I would like to go there again and have more time with less people. And Way less people. Do the one thing I know you won't do. Nope, won't. Sit in the solitary cell by myself. Mm -mm. Will not. No. Nope. Hard pass. I don't know if you ever heard the conversation with Kevin C with that one. Probably. When he was in there and he asked when the his... uh spirit box that he was using said i see you and he mm -hmm. asked where where are you and it said next, next to you and he's like nope 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 so i hear muffled through that thick heavy ass fucking door so i opened it right away and i was like you already he's like yeah other than it said right next to you yeah so we did all that and also you know in our first year we did another investigation at the bell mansion which is quote unquote our home hunt because that was our first one and there's not really anywhere near us that does that kind of thing. There is, but I never looked into it. <laughs> I've, there's always the one in South Bend no. that we could go to. <laughs> yeah, you know my opinion on that one. Cause oh, I, after you know our, mine. You know, as much as I dug and poked and prodded through the internet about that one, when I found out the real reasonings behind that, uh -huh. you know, it's like, oh, how do you fund a, a historical mansion re yeah. renovation? You say it's haunted. But, you know, uh, well, it's on. Why don't you come see it? Why don't you just let me come do it on myself without giving you any money? If you're going to back it up, if it is, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to pay you. But also, you know, with me wanting to figure that out about that place, you can't find any evidence anywhere about this place other yeah. than one specific person, which I'm not going to mention by name on here. Right. Because you Google anything and like the County Historical Society says there's like been no actual reports of that place being haunted whatsoever. Yeah. But I don't know. That dude lost his credibility credibility to me when he made a YouTube video that he was picking up spirits in the haunted Victoria's Secret. Just stupid. Right. Yeah, there is other little things in the, his videos. Yeah. I'm like, it's too much of a coincidence. Yeah. But anyhow, no, no thanks. but anyhow, and some other people I've talked to about said individuals said uh, they're not 
on the best terms with other locations that we know of. Oh, I within, wonder why. Within driving distance of us. Yeah. But they don't know why. They only heard little bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. And also, one of the biggest tips I got from one of our other podcast friends, Justin Rimmel, the Mysterious Circumstances podcast, is to, if you see how some kind of building suddenly become haunted within the last five years, be very skeptical of it. Yeah. So that's why I was very skeptical about that place in the beginning. Because if there's one person I'm going to listen and believe about over that stuff, it's going to be him. Yeah. Other than, you know, somebody well-known paranormal-wise. But anyhow. Right. But, you know, we've been heard all over the world, and I didn't think about pulling numbers and whatnot, but I know people have listened to us in Belgium from the very beginning, and they still Mm -hmm. do, and the Middle East and Turkey and... Ireland, finally. Ireland, finally. You know, in the great north of Iceland and Greenland. All over Australia. Yep. Every, literally Some in Japan. Everywhere. Yeah, literally, you, th- you name a country, we've been, or a country, continent, somebody is there has heard us. It might be, yep. you know, a U.S. military base or whatnot, but it still counts. Yep. But, you know, it's still chasing that Antarctica one, but that'll probably never happen. Probably not. <laughs> we still got that one in Moscow. Still wanting to know if it's you, pointy boy Putin. Pointy boy. <laughs> Pointy boy. So, with enough of that rambling going on, let's get this going with honor with our On This Day for October 2nd. October 2nd. But first, actually, before that, you didn't ask me the question. I don't need to. It's yes, your you episode. Do. You're going to go into what it have, after this what, anyways. Fine. What do you have for us this week, David? Oh, good <laughs> thing you asked, David, because I'm not sure how to put this, what it is. It's like... <laughs> part true crime ginger i didn't ask you it's part true crime part urban legend and just an incident all overall the mantoon mad gasser never heard of it i was looking into another semi well known ish october story that somebody beat me to a week kevin yeah kevin (laughs) he knows exactly what story i'm talking about so i might still do that this year yeah oh and not only that you know then we started our Twitch mm-hmm. within the last year when, you know, oh, we're going to only do, you know, fun things all the time. Then it's like, I started, you know what, I'm playing a game. Why don't I just get on Twitch and just stream it? Yeah. And then look at that. And now we're up to like 115, 117 followers on there now. Yeah. You know, if you're interested, because I'm playing all the sorts of spooky games you may or may not be interested in, other than, you know, doing some community games, come check us out. Just get on Twitch and do macabre underscore emporium. And that's the that's our Twitch username. Yep. You'll find us there Wednesday through Friday, generally, from 8 p.m. Eastern to 11 o'clock Eastern. Eastern. Friday sometimes is longer if I feel like it. But anyway, so now with all that said, now we're going to do our On This Day. And I'm leaving all that goofy shit in there. Okay. Even with my monologue with myself. So yeah. for On This Day, October 2nd, photographer Ian Leibowitz was born in Waterbury, Connecticut in 1949. Leibovitz's most well-known photograph is of John Lennon and Yoko Ono that that she took on the day he was killed, and later on, this photo was used on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. And said photograph is, like, he's, like, in the fetal position, like, completely naked Mm -hmm. and laying and kissing her on the cheek. That's the photograph. Is that the one I was thinking it was? I was thinking that portrait of them in black and white up close is the one i was thinking of but i looked it up and i was like wow i was way off when you see her face can you hear her in your head no (laughs) the younger one younger yoko no older one yes i can hear that screaming bad all around from the beginning to now well i understand that but i'm just saying the younger photographs of her i don't hear the voice because that one video clip that keeps going (laughs) around now is memes is the one i hear (laughs) so i associate it with fuck uh, with the photographs of her now, not her yeah. younger. In 2001, the TV show Scrubs premieres on NBC and runs for nine seasons. That was a show I never got into. Never, I didn't either. The Everly Brothers are awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 7000 Hollywood Boulevard in, ni- Boulevard in 1986. Some of their hit songs include All I Have to Do is Dream, Wake Up Little Susie, and Bye Bye Love. I know one of those. I'm sure you know all three of them if you actually heard them. I know Wake Up Little Susie for sure. It's like Bye Bye Love, Bye Bye Loneliness or Happiness or something like that's the next line. In 1980, 38-year-old Muhammad Ali comes out of a two-year retirement to challenge undefeated world heavyweight champion Larry Holmes at Caesars Palace. Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Ali is pounded unmercifully for 10 rounds before his corner throws in the towel. Little Folks, created by Charles M. Schultz, is published in 1950 and will later on become Peanuts. Little Folk was only published in seven nationwide newspapers before becoming the Peanuts 
And in, at its peak, it was published in over 2,600 newspapers. Damn. Fun fact about that, one of the local fire departments here actually had a copyright permission from the Schultz Legacy to put Snoopy on their fire trucks. But when they remodeled the station, the, the copyright got quote unquote lost. They think it was stolen because of having his actual signature on it of some sort. That sucks. Yeah. I remember you telling me about that. In 1981, Logitech was founded and is one of the leading manufacturers worldwide of computer accessories. So if you're listening to us, I know at least we've all at least had a Logitech keyboard or mouse or something. Definitely or something a like mouse. That. Like not me right now at all. <laughs> Or what's, a couple. What's, what's this one? I already can see one. I can see a Logitech device from where I'm sitting here in the office right over there, a headset. And the mouse to your laptop, I bet. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> That's just an off brand, but it probably was made for them and just rebranded for that yeah. PC manufacturer. And American revolutionary Samuel Adam died at the age of 81 in 1803 in Boston, Massachusetts. You know what I'm talking about? Samuel Adams? Yeah. Yeah? Very important historical figure to our in the United States. Huh. And the beer company is after named after him because he was a brewer himself. I thought I figured it wasn't actually his his line of beer. No, I didn't assume that either. <laughs> there is our on this day for October 2nd and all the other weird rambling thoughts to get out of our head before we get going here. So. Yay, done. So are you ready to get started then? Yes. All right, let's get going. So I don't know, like I said earlier, I don't really know how to classify the Mantoon Mad Gasser. Uh-huh. Because it's part true crime, part urban legend, so to speak. I mean, it is an incident of some sort, so I don't know what to really call this one, but it felt like this kind of fit, you know, the October thing. Spooktober. Spooktober. So before we get to learning about the Mad Gasser, Mantoon, Illinois which is located 180 miles south of Chicago and covers 11 square miles compared to the city that we live in is 16 and a half square miles. So, so it's, it's not too much smaller. No. During World War II, the town of Mantoon, Illinois had a population of about 15,000. And I totally forgot to see what it is today to see how much growth there was. There was a boom in population. It's more <laughs> than 15,000, I'm sure. It's 15,001 there. <laughs> I just fact checked myself. I guess. I still, know. That's not a fact. <laughs> it's, still it's a bullshit boom. fact I just made up. <laughs> and as others, some shows would say I was just shovel cocking. Shovel cocking? Yep, that's what they call just making up bullshit on the spot. It was mostly agricultural, producing soybeans, corn, and also livestock, along with other various industrial manufacturing as well. I couldn't, I tried to find out what type, like what leading manufacturing was, couldn't find anything on it. Mantoon also homed an air army base for pilot training during the World War II. Before the Mad Gasser, the crime rate was very low in Mantoon and was considered a quiet and safe place to live, so it almost sounds like it was another pleasant town USA, just like Chowchilla two weeks ago until August 31st, 1944. And this is when the first attack would happen over on Grant Avenue when Urban Reef was awoken in the middle of the night by a strange odor. He felt weak and nauseated, and he would begin vomiting uh -huh. from the sweet odor that he was smelling. And his first thoughts was that the gas might have been left on a stove down in the kitchen. And when his wife attempted to get up to check to see if the gas was still on, but she was unable to leave the bed because she was starting to suffer partial uh, paralysis. Oh. Said the following day or the same night, it wasn't clear, but a similar incident did happen next to their home. An unnamed mother and daughter were also suffering some of these same effects, too. The mother was woken up from sounds of her daughter coughing in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. and they suffered from the same effects as... Like the, the partial paralysis? Yep, and uh, huh. the other symptoms of... Right. Like, also burning around the mouth or in the throat as well, too. Uh, on September 1st, at least four gas attacks have happened in total at this point. But this would also be the first time one of these would be reported by the news. So this is, like, the only real well-documented case documented case of the Mantoon Mad Gasser mm -hmm. is of Eileen Kearney on Marshall Avenue. She also did report smelling a sweet, strong odor around 11 p.m. that night, but she dismissed it as it being the flower she had outside of her bedroom window. But as it got stronger, she said she would lose the feeling in her legs, just like mm -hmm. the other family 
and they'd already been a guest at this point. She would also call to her sister, and she also noticed the sweet odor smell in the air, and then she determined it was coming from the direction of the open bedroom window, which where Eileen dismissed it from the flowers that she had outside. Yeah. They did call the police, but couldn't find any evidence of a prowler, but her husband that had returned home from a shift as a taxi driver around 12.30 a.m., he did say he did see a man hiding near a window of a home nearby, but he wasn't able to catch him. He did describe him as a tall man in a dark clothing and a knit cap. This would become the common description from most people when giving their description of the said man gasser of yeah. this town. Just like the the race before, Eileen Kearney suffered also a burning sensation on her lips and in her throat in the partial paralysis going on it's got to be terrifying to just be right. like laying in bed oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden you can't move your damn legs oh yeah or, you know your arms oh yeah so when eileen kieran got uh gassed we'll say instead of attacked mm -hmm. uh, the police believe that this was motive a motive for robbery because uh, the Kearneys did have a large sum of money in their home and they believe that someone may have been seeing her and her sister counting it through an open window because they probably Nice day. Let's have the windows open. Didn't give yeah. never never thought about it. There's no crime on her child. They're not going to give a second thought, you know, about that. But somebody were like, oh, look at that. I want to come back later. Yeah. Several more attacks would end up happening over the following nights. But the first possible evidence of a man gasser would be found at the home of Carl and Beulah Cords on the on North 21st Street on September 5th. The Cords would find a white cloth about the size of a man's handkerchief on their porch. Beulah would pick it up and smell it and would become ill. She said it felt like an electric shock and she could feel her face swelling and burning in her mouth and throat similar to Eileen Kearney. And she also began to vomit. Mm. She also would, she too would also feel the partial paralysis in her legs like other victims did. Beulah concluded that the mad gasser, since I'm sure this is the fifth day this has happened, that word is getting around town already so everybody's already on edge. It's like, am I next or whatever? I bet. So she concluded that this cloth was left to knock out their family dog as he was known to sleep on the front porch. Well, on the porch, it didn't say front, back, side porch, whatever, so that they can make entry to their home, into their home without being noticed. Police also did find a tube of lipstick and a skeleton key that was described as well-worn. The cloth was tested, but the police found nothing on this cloth to be there. They found nothing on it, so it doesn't make any sense as to why when she smelled it. Yeah, why she smelled. Yep. The the sweet smell and then mm -hmm. was like partially paralyzed. Yep. But the police found nothing on it when they analyzed it. But this is also 1944. They didn't have like the forensics like they do now. I mean, like, did they sniff it? Well, that would have been a surefire way. Well, they probably did at that point. They're like, here oh. you go, rookie. Hey, hey probably come here. <laughs> Tell me if this smells like poison. Right. So the total amount of days that there would be attacks is approximately 13 days, starting on August 31st to September 13th. Damn. 21 attacks would end up happening, and as these attacks did go on, the residents of Mantoon started demanding something to be done to City Hall, and some started to make up their own posses to try and stop the said mad gaster, but authorities suggested not to do so, that nobody would be shot by a framed homeowner on edge. Police also suggested that people stay out of residential areas unless they had a reason to be there. Other, so other than, yeah, if you don't live there, don't be there. Yeah, I mean... Because, That's how it should be anyways. But. Because all these attacks were happening in residential areas mm -hmm. at, after dark. So they're like, the business areas are fine. Just don't be in residential areas when, if you don't need to be over there. Yeah. But even though I said by the 13th, by September 12th, they were getting so many false alarm calls that they had to reduce the priority of the gasters reports. And they announced that the entire incident was due mostly due to high anxiety being felt from the ongoing war. Really? So, yeah. And everyone's on edge, you know, and look how everybody was after 9-11 happened. It's like, is there going to be another attack? You it's know? not going to paralyze you, though. Right. But I'm just saying for what we can, you know, Fair. relate to for ourselves is that everybody was on edge and, and anxious because of all the attacks in New York City. Yeah. In our lifetime, is like, is it going to happen again so soon after that happened or whatever? After the police made this announcement, the gas report started to decline, even though on the September 13th, Bertha Birch added more to the description of the mad gasser by saying it was a woman dressed as a man because of one of the pieces of evidence they did find was footprints, and they were woman footprints and underneath a window and some cut window screens. How do they know they're woman's footprints? Probably by the size of the foot. Men can have small feet. Right. But if it's a woman's shoe... Men can put on a woman's shoe. True, but it, this was 1944. They were like, oh, yep, it's a woman. Look at the fucking shoes there, guy. Okay. <laughs> you don't think about things like that, do you? N no, I just... 
It's like you have 2824 thinking in a story I, I from know. 1944. I'm try, I, I try. I really do. Well, they would have used some much more awful language if that's like, unless it's, you know. Yeah, I know. You know, things that we said about in the Howard Under episode. Yeah. And I've only said those for historical significance. So what caused these gas attacks? What did cause the gas attacks? What do you attacks? think caused them? I don't know. Aliens. That's actually one of the answers they gave. They believe it was aliens. I thought you were just fucking with me for a second. <laughs> I was. Aliens. <laughs> I was. Okay, so I technically wasn't at first. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to reveal one of the possibilities that they gave right away off the bat. She's going to fall for it. So, yes, they. So, one of the things people that have researched into this has said it was aliens. But the more logical explanations was more people that suffered from it because there's not actually really that many reports of people actually being attacked yeah. and having these symptoms is that Thomas V. Wright, the commissioner of public health of Mantoon, said that the number of gassy incidents was likely caused by mass hysteria. The fear of the first attacks made people more on edge fearing their home would be next as they were kind of randomly reported around town because I'm like, yeah. I looked at the list of them and they're not just real sporadic. Yeah. Spread I out. mean, there's like one or two like right next to each other, but then it's like another whole other street away from where it was before. Yeah. So it's almost like as if like how Richard Ramirez was attacking randomly over LA. Mm -hmm. But again, but anxiety and hysteria is not going to make you go. It's not good. You're not going to be paralyzed. Right, but there wasn't that many people that actually were paralyzed. They were just like, oh, I smell this. They're, the mad gaster must be nearby, uh -huh. is what a lot of it was. But how many were paralyzed? Only about four to five people actually suffered symptoms, if I remember correctly, because I forgot to put the total number down. on. But still, that's four or five that became partially paralyzed. And that's all it took for a town of 15,000 people to start losing their shit over this. No, I understand that. But do you, do we find out what caused the paralyzation they in still the first don't place? Know. Okay. They still don't know today. We're going to jump ahead a little bit. They still don't know today what caused this, because I tried to find an answer to see if they've actually finally solved what caused this, but they just still don't know. Okay. They also believe that the first... First published headline in the Mantoon Journal Gazette, Mrs. Kearney and daughter first victims would imply that there might be more gas attacks coming. So it was them. Yep, it was the newspaper. <laughs> so they could sell more headlines. Case closed. Damn. In a press conference the police had, they also said that the odors and symptoms were the result of a chemical leak from nearby factories. Atlas Imperial had to be had to put out their own statement due to the statement from the police. In their release statement, they said they only had they only had five gallons of carbon tetrachloride in stock, but was contained inside firefighting equipment. But they also did deny quantities of tetrachloroethylene on site. They and, denied it. Yeah, they never specified how much they had. And the reason why it would take and why they're saying this this couldn't come from them is that because it would take a very large quantity of the industrial solvent, the tetrachloroethylene, to actually make people, the town's people sick and the factory workers would be affected first and none of them showed any signs or symptoms. Carbon tetrachloride and triochloroethylene both have a sweet odor and that can cause the symptoms reported. Including the paralyzation. Oh, all the symptoms reported, both of these chemicals can do that. Which I don't think it could have been, the if, even if it was... The carbon tetrachloride, that is actually designed to remove oxygen out of the room, if I remember correctly, because if you go to like some historical places like Greenfield Village uh -huh. or the streets of yesterday at the Museum of Scientists and Industry in Chicago, that big red teardrop looking thing on the wall. I don't remember. I'm sure I've shown you pictures I pointed out to you. Oh, but it was, it's like a big red teardrop looking thing, like upside down. Uh -huh. That's full of that carbon tetrachloride inside of it. And it's supposed to make all the oxygen be removed to put out a fire. That's like the earlier versions of a fire extinguisher, you know, kind of not similar to the two that I have here sitting in the office because yeah. those were those one is like, well, they're now both technically retired. One's actually full and I can't get the top off to empty it. I'm pretty sure it's just full with water because I've turned it upside down and doesn't nothing happens. So mm -hmm. those are soda acid. Those, the two here in the office, for those that work, they had to be converted completely upside down for them to operate. Because it'll okay. build the soda acid that's in, that container is inside it. When you flip it up, so down, it mixes water, it starts to build a pressure, and that's how they worked. The two that are in here. The, the teardrop ones, you literally just throw it as hard as you can for it to break. Smart. But it's not also banned from use for fire, for fire suppression because of these things, and it's harmful to the environment. And like I had already said, some reachers even concluded that there might be an actual attacker, 
but that was never caught and it goes all the way out to the crazy idea of aliens. And but still today, they are unsure what caused the gas tax in Mantoon, Illinois. But also with that said, and listening to other podcasts about the things our government done, Mm-hmm. Is there the possibility this is one of those early things like MK Ultra? What's MK Ultra? I've heard the name of So MK Ultra, like there's a lot to it. It's basically when the CIA tested large metropolitan areas with aerosol and LSD. Huh. Like they were er, making it an aerosol and spraying it off the top of buildings in like San Francisco. Getting oh, everybody oh, high. Yep. Just to see wow. what would happen, basically. For Everybody was the most relaxed and fucking happy they've ever been. So, I mean, because there's always been all these nefarious, you know, government experience through, Mm -hmm. you know, history. There's that. There's the Tuskegee Airmen syphilis issue that everybody knows. And that's why a lot of the African-American population, the older generations, don't trust doctors. That and don't trust doctors because of that, you know. Fucking fair, though. Yeah. So, and that's... it's a stretch with it, but it's World War II and, you yeah. know, CIA and all that doesn't exist yet to that, well, at least to our knowledge that they want to give us, you know, not yeah. to say that they, you know, weren't experimenting. With... Sorry, that was. <laughs> he did not ask for that. <laughs> that was such an intrusive thought, that one. <laughs> Sarah let her intrusive thoughts win with Legosi sitting on the desk, minding his own business, being a cute as fuck, loafing on the table by the soundboard. And she just smacked him on the butt for no reason. I don't know. It was just, it was perfect. I don't know. Sorry, Legosi. And at least your dad doesn't turn and do them dumb shit like that with you. Just hold you and love you all the time, guy. Yeah. Even when you don't want it. But I don't even know what I was saying now. <laughs> I'm sorry. She threw me on track here. <laughs> But yeah, it's like, who knows? Maybe that's really what it was as a possibility, too. Because if you think about it, oh, there's also the possibility that there was a leak in the rail yard that just never was reported because there was a large rail distribution center in Mantoon as well, too. Because I'm sure there was because of all the industrial manufacturing. Yeah. And their food, their agricultural sources going into the war effort, plus the air army base. So you already got all the groundwork for that kind of thing to go on. Yeah. So it's a possibility, but I don't, there won't, we'll never uh, know. Yeah, it could be one of the sealed files that it never will be declassified without being, you know. It's in area. Area 51. Or, area 51. Or the it's gov- actually in an area called Area 52 where all of the like cryptids and. Yeah. All this kind of shit is classified. <laughs> it's not aliens. Aliens is just Area 51. Right. Area 52 is all the extra shit. Like, like we're this. the Ark of the Covenant and all that story. <laughs> yes. All the other weird random shenanigans. Or it's being happens. examined by top men. Top, top men. <laughs> yeah. Or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> just trying to get that transatlantic accent out there again. Or whatever we want to call that voice. My old timey radio voice. That's what it's called, transatlantic. I know. There's a chick on TikTok that speaks with transatlantic accent and it's quite nice. So yeah, that's just my thought. Could have been a government thing too. Early on before, you know, CAA and all that stuff started doing all that stuff. That's what you were talking about before I spanked Lugosi. Yeah, before she... Spank the potato loaf, basically. Yep. Yeah, that's just my personal opinion that it could have been an early government experiment before, you know, the CIA existed or we knew of its existence. Yeah. Basically. It could be. So, hey, what happens if we use this on people since we are at war? You know, because even during those times, they had the Germans had volunteers during World War One and World War Two about gas yeah. attack. Well, not so much during World War Two. They voluntold people, unfortunately. But more so during World War One, they actually had volunteers to don't do it again. <laughs> They had, she keeps distracting me trying to spank <laughs> Legosi again. They actually had volunteers during World War One on to see the effects of gas. Yeah. People actually volunteered for it. I wish you could hear my face right now because right. it's very, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look into that maybe as an episode. Yeah. As a human monster or whatever, but not copy Kevin's work on that because from their yes. asshole eliminator tour, tour uh, tournament that they did they t- asshole eliminator oh that's right yeah 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 I yeah that's one yes. thing that they do is the asshole eliminator yes. they change it every year but the next time they do it when they come back off their break probably they're gonna do it in march because they do around march madness is yeah. it they're gonna they're gonna do pos- yes. they're gonna do positive people this time around because really yeah because they it takes a toll on them to do the asshole eliminator tournament just hearing about <sighs> shitty people for weeks on end like that i mean granted that's what we do but you you have a, the t- 
tendency to put your positive stuff in there. Right. Like God's Rambo and yep. um, Mia... Mila... Malinka Savage. Malinka Savage. Thank you. Yeah. And the... Cliff Young. Yep. Is that who you're thinking about? <laughs> yes. I was going to say the runner, the Olympic guy. <laughs> the Olympic guy? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're you pretty good at bringing, like, the shine and the light to right. my dark. It's so. like a stupid video I made for Twitch of uh, skeletons dancing in a rave, and I put it to mm-hmm. the Cascadia every time we touch song. That's kind of like how our episodes are. I hate that song so much. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how my brain works. I saw that video. I was like, I gotta put this song with it. There's anyway. so many other songs you could have picked. Sorry, that's the song my brain picked first. Well, your brain was smooth in that area. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Lugosi's all the time. Yeah. But if you actually do want to listen to more cryptid type things, go check out the real creature feature where Matt Kolinsky that has a background in biology this has a discussion with his friends about cryptids and other mythological creatures on if they actually could exist or not, which nice. can be found just about anywhere. Has Have they done the Michigan melon heads? I don't believe so. I think they look more so into like... You know, like, the animal type cryptid. Yeah, like Bigfoot griffins and stuff like that is gotcha. more what they look into. Not that. so much not, just urban legendy cri- kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, not like the Michigan Mellow Heads where, you know, it was an actual medical condition and that kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, and then also, I mean, I'm going to keep going because I haven't done this in a while for anybody and they keep shouting this out. So everyone's getting a shout out this episode. This oh, week. yeah, shout outs. So, yeah, like I said, Matt Kolinsky and the Real Creature Feature. You know, Kevin C. and Kevin Hire. Kevin, Kevin C and Kevin H. Yep, of Dark Windows Podcast, even though they're on a break. Hopefully, you know, they come back soon. Hopefully not long. Yeah. There are my, our buddies. My weeks are thrown off because you guys are putting out episodes now. What the fuck? Because I listen to your guys' Patreon on Mondays, <laughs> and then your guys' regular episode later on through the week with ads, so you guys get double revenue from me, but anyway... <laughs> You know, and then, you know, we have to say, you know, the Scatcast Network as well, too, because, mm-hmm. you know, the creator of that, he went well out of his way for us on, you know, the Bat Township episode. So, yeah, yeah. go listen to Scatcast if you want to go listen to some sketch comedy stuff and whatnot. If you're into that sort of thing. Yep. And then they also have an episode. They have a show that does things similar to ours as well. And then, you know, Justin Rimmel of the Mysterious Circumstances podcast. He helped us out along the way with a bunch of questions at the very beginning. Yep. We've got also then Leonard over there at the Romino Scholar podcast. He does on his own. He does a lot of history stuff too. Yeah. Like he did an episode on art stuff, which I didn't find as like, this is going to be not that interesting. But after I started listening to it, it actually was because I had to do with talk about some of the controversial things with the art and the weird shit people did to him. Yeah. And then you got Leonard over at the Remedial Scholar. Which he also does that with his buddy Steve on the West of Nowhere podcast. Leonard and Steve. Yep. Leonard and Steve on the West of Nowhere oh, podcast. Lenny and Stevie. Two battle buddies that basically, you know, talk about current events and whatnot. And yeah, it's a good listen to because they put their own commentary with it. So, yeah. Got anybody else? I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head. I can. Who am I forgetting? Our two fantastic twitch moderators and friends yep. noodle and mini yep we love you guys yep and then you know there's unfortunately there's way too many people that we've met through twitch so we get like i could go on for another 20 minutes probably with names of people that i'm sure you could and that's probably where people no. are going to be like no we're done there's you know <laughs> i'm going to mention people that have you know, they've gone another way that I've I've built forged relationships with mm-hmm. on there that have automatically when I actually enter their chat and I type anything in there, yeah, we have an automatic shout out. Yeah. So I would like to thank Liz Snoke, Two Cheese Nips, Skeeble, uh, Skeeble underscore V. You need to come back too, buddy. Twitter, my lunch break's not the same without you. You guys are throwing you know all, everyone taking breaks at the same time is screwing up my days. But Skeeble underscore V. Heavy 0704, Blue Wonder 478. These are all people on Twitch. Go give them a like, whatnot. Tell them Kevin Forium sent you. Berserker Kamikaze. He's helped me out with a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And of course, Noodle Ninja and the Mini Battle Scat are two moderators. Yes. For Twitch, watching for bots and any other things along the way so I can keep on going and not having to stop what I'm doing or yep. in between. They are very good at what they do. They're also very good at making clips of you being scared or saying really stupid shit, and it's fantastic. Oh, I know. I'm surprised 
Noodle hasn't taken and put any of that stuff together in a video yet. I know. But now that you said it, go ahead, Noodle. Yeah. We're waiting. Where's the video at, yo? Yeah. That's why I made you the channel editor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duh. She's so, an editor. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I did that so she could pull clips Do and make it, the videos. Noodle. She must have forgot about those. Probably. But anyhow. I think that's it, everybody from Twitch that I can think of off the top of my head. If I forgot you and you have listened to us, I'm sorry. It was not intentional. I forgot your name, but it's greatly yeah. appreciated that you listen. You come and want, hang out in the stream, just lurking or whatever. And that that counts for the podcast portion, too. Every yeah. single one of you that listen for the past two years now. Yeah. Like we appreciate the absolute fuck out of you. Yep. Everybody that comes to watch David and I mm -hmm. or David by himself or David and Noodle or David and whoever play games, we appreciate the fuck out of you, too. Right. And go back to Twitch. Fun Twitch story, though. Just watching two cheese nips one night mm -hmm. and she mentioned the podcast. And one of the people in her chat asked, what kind of stories do you guys do on the podcast? So, you know, I started doing my thing and I was like, yeah, we cover true crime and history and we do figures of historical significance. And I, for an example, I had just happened to pull Malika Savage out of mm -hmm. off the top of my head as yeah. As an example, you know, about it. And they were like, oh, my God, she's from my country and she is a war hero. This person that was asking about the podcast and basically sealed her into listening. Yeah. So. Awesome. It just goes to show that word of mouth yep. is usually the best direct route to promoting something yep. that you guys enjoy. So if you enjoy us, promote us. Tell your friends about us. Tell your coworkers. Tell your family. Just whoever. We're always down for new listeners. So before this rambling continues to going on here, I think it's time we get out of the important for the day, Sarah. What do you think? I agree. So until next time. Remember to creep it real. Okay, bye. Bye. Join our Facebook group by searching Macabre Emporium. Like and subscribe on YouTube at Macabre Emporium Podcast. Follow us on TikTok at Macabre Emporium Pod. Follow us on Twitter at Macabre Emporium. If you have any stories of the paranormal, your local true crime or weird history that you would like us to look into and possibly do an episode on, email us at macabemporiumpod at gmail.com. And remember to follow, rate, review, and share whenever and wherever you can to help us grow our podcast. 